Good morning, and welcome back to the Urban Preparedness Channel. The only channel that understands the government is only going to count your vote after you die. <laughs> Today I wanted to talk about a subject that's kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, reasons why we prep. Now, everybody has a million reasons why they're a prepper. Some people are a prepper because they think an EMP is going to take out all the electricity in the world. Some people prep because they think a meteor is going to hit the world and we're all going to live in darkness. Some people prep because they think the government is going to storm trooper through their neighborhood and put everything in martial law. Some people prepare for economic downfall. Economic downfall is a big subject for a lot of preppers. I don't want to look at this particular video on a grand scale, but economic downfall is probably the closest reason for prepping that we and my family prep for. But we don't prep for it on a grand scale. We call it the poor apocalypse. So that's what our subject is today. The poor apocalypse. Now, the poor apocalypse doesn't happen because your federal government accidentally printed too much money and the economy collapsed. No, the poor apocalypse happens because you, your significant other, lose your job. The poor apocalypse happens because your car breaks down and you didn't have money set aside for it. The poor apocalypse happens because all of a sudden your bills all hit on the same week. And you can't afford it till your next paycheck comes through. So today while we talk about the poor apocalypse, I'm going to talk about how to prepare your family for the poor apocalypse, how my family prepares for the poor apocalypse, and what you can be doing right now before it happens. So, nothing drives a prepper more crazy than having 25 years worth of shelf-stable food on a shelf and nothing ever comes down the pipeline that makes you have to use it. Okay? If you spent your entire life preparing for an EMP that never happened, you're probably pretty disappointed. But every single viewer of my channel either has or will, at some time in their life, have to deal with the poor apocalypse. Now, the poor apocalypse mentality here in our house means that when we go grocery shopping, we buy about 5% more than we need. And we put that 5% in the back stock somewhere, and over the course of about six months, we have a pretty nice nest egg of canned food, dried goods, things like that, that we use every single day while we're cooking, eating, things like that. So that when the poor apocalypse happens, we're not starving to death. We don't have to go and ask the neighbors for a can of beans because we were prepared for the poor apocalypse. And I think you should be too. One of the big issues that everybody seems to encounter when they're preparing their backstock is everybody thinks they need 12 years of beef jerky, 40 pounds of flour, 1,200 million jugs of freeze-dried eggs. Your backstock doesn't need to have that if you're preparing for a poor apocalypse. If you're preparing for a poor apocalypse, what your backstock needs is the staple foods that you eat every single day with dinner. So if you're the kind of family that has a steak, mashed potatoes, and green beans, what your backstock should include is powdered potatoes, a few extra cans of green beans, so that when the poor apocalypse comes next Friday and your paycheck didn't come through, your family's not absolutely screwed. They can go in the cupboard, open up the cupboard, and you've got a whole batch of powdered potatoes. Now, you don't like powdered potatoes. I don't like powdered potatoes. Luckily, there's a wonderful woman up in my house that will take a whole potato and turn it into mashed potatoes, and it tastes absolutely delicious. Now, when you can't afford to go buy a bag of potatoes, well then, you just go right over into the back stock, pull out a box, you take that box, you open it up, you dump it in a bucket, you add a little water, you stir it over a slow heat on the oven, and ta-da, you still have mashed potatoes. They don't taste as good, they're not as fantastic, but you still have that staple in your diet. The poor apocalypse is about preparing for everyday small emergencies. If your car breaks down, and it's going to cost you $1,500 to replace the brand new POS Dodge transmission you just put in your truck 30,000 miles ago because for some reason every 30,000 miles it breaks down. If you weren't prepared to pay that $1,200, that choice might come down to can I pay rent and eat or can I fix my truck and keep going to work. 
But if you set about 5% of your groceries aside and you set 5% of your income aside in a safe somewhere awaiting the poor apocalypse, when something crazy happens like your transmission explodes, you can open up that safe, grab that 5%, go buy a new transmission. Or you can go in your back stock, grab those groceries, open those cans, and happily eat a big old fat kid sandwich while you're depressed about how you just lost your job. What you don't want to deal with is the compounding issues of I don't have a job, I don't have food, and my truck broke down, and I wasn't prepared for this. Especially when in the back room you might have six years worth of freeze-dried bacon that isn't going to help you today. Now, there's a whole bunch about this subject I can talk about, but I wanted to keep this video short and sweet today. Mostly because if I keep my video going too long, sooner or later I'm going to swear, and then I'm going to have to start the whole video over. <laughs> I don't like to edit my videos. I like my videos to be nice and fluid, go all the way through. So this particular one is like the 15th take. So we're going to try and keep it nice and short today. I talked about your back stock food. I talked about 5% of your income you're throwing in that safe for emergencies, things like that. That's what the poor apocalypse is. If all of this keeps working out over months and months and months and months and months and you never encounter the poor apocalypse, when you go in your back room and you look at your back stock, you are now prepared for a real life apocalypse. Simply because every single time you went to the grocery store, every single time you got paid, you were taking a small amount and preparing for the poor apocalypse. Now I know this subject wasn't what anybody intended me on doing today, but hey, that's what I went with. I'm eclectic, what can I say? Now, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about on the subject, but there is one other thing I wanted to talk about today. If you go ahead and look in our bio, uh, you'll see that I posted a link today for a GoFundMe account. That GoFundMe account is not for me. I'm not going to put it in my pocket. It's not going to be a fantastic like nest egg that I was really excited about that everybody gave me money for. No, that's, that's not it at all. I started this GoFundMe account because I think that right now in America, what each and every one of us needs is to feel secure. And the best way to feel secure is to have a community that understands exactly what you're going through and how you feel, and they look at the world kind of in the same light. So I started a GoFundMe account to start a survivalistic community. So if you'd like to donate to the Survivalistic Community Fund, you can go ahead and you can find the link in our bio. Um, if you can't afford it, that's fine. Please feel free to share that video. Even if you want to donate 50 cents, I don't care. Donate anonymously or don't donate at all doesn't hurt my feelings any. I started the GoFundMe account because I feel like if survivors would like a survival community, they're willing to donate to a survival community. If you can't afford to do that, go ahead and share it with other people that you think would be interested in the idea. I'm not going to turn anybody away. Now, one thing that I've noticed with a lot of these survival communities is that they sit empty waiting on an upcoming apocalypse that has yet to come. They slowly fall into disrepair. They start falling apart. And then whoever owns the place sells it off to whoever's going to pay for it, and they call it good. That's not what I want to do. If this takes off and they fund my survival community, while it sits vacant waiting on an apocalypse, I want to use those empty buildings to house and help out with veteran homelessness. I want to leave those beds available for any veteran that doesn't have a place to sleep so that they have a place to come and lay their head. This isn't a homeless shelter. It's just somewhere where fellow like-minded individuals, fellow veterans, can come and lay their head on a pillow at night and they have a place to take a shower so that they can try to get a job and get back on their feet. That's what I want to do with it while it's empty. And if a crisis pops off, that survivalist community will be open to anybody who's willing to work for a better future for the survivors of an American nation. That being the case, uh, again, the link's in the bio. If you have any questions, if you have anything that you wanted us to talk about that we didn't cover in previous videos, uh, go ahead and drop a comment down below. Hit like. Please subscribe. Please share our future videos. Uh, and please, please, please make sure you share the GoFundMe account because a survivalist community is something that I'm very passionate about, and I think that we can make this happen. Uh, that being the case, that's all we're going to cover today. Thank you very much. God bless America. If you haven't already, please read the Constitution. Till next time, guys.